Hello and welcome. My name is Kristen and I'm a California State Park interpreter filming here at the Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove with my friend Molly the Monarch. Now today Molly and I are filming from an overwintering habitat and historically this site has been considered one of the largest overwintering habitats for western monarch butterflies. However, over the course of several years, less and less monarchs are migrating to this overwintering habitat and several sites throughout California. You might be wondering, why is this happening? Well, today Molly and I are going to examine a few of the threats to the Western Monarch to understand this dramatic population decline. Join Molly Monarch and I as we take a closer look at some of the threats to the Western Monarch butterfly. Before we dive deeper into this topic, let's define what a threat is. A threat is a person or thing likely to cause damage or danger. Now that we know what a threat is, let's take a look at the threats we are going to talk about today. Listed are some of the threats to the Western Monarch Butterfly, which include habitat loss, use of pesticides, and climate change. Molly and I will examine each of these threats and explore how these threats affect the Western Monarch Butterfly population. Many of the threats to the Western Monarch population affect their habitat, so let's define what a habitat is. A habitat is defined as the natural home or environment of an animal, plant, or organism. Did you know monarch butterflies actually require two different habitats? These two habitats include overwintering habitats, like the one Molly and I are filming from today, and also milkweed habitat locations which support the life cycle. Both these habitats play an important role in the survival of the western monarch butterfly and any threats to these habitats can have a lasting effect on the western monarch butterfly population. Let's get a closer view of this overwintering habitat by taking in a 360 view of the Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove. Now that we have gotten a closer view of this overwintering habitat, let's discover the importance of overwintering habitats and the threats facing western monarchs at these habitat locations. Western monarchs migrate to overwintering sites throughout California to escape cold winter climates. But where do monarchs migrate from and to? Well, monarchs can migrate from hundreds to thousands of miles to find the perfect locations to spend the winter. The Rocky Mountains divide the eastern and western monarch populations. Monarchs east of the Rockies migrate to Mexico, and monarchs west of the Rockies migrate to California for the winter. Western monarchs prefer overwintering habitats where the conditions are just right and include a canopy of trees, like the Pismo State Beach overwintering habitat, with its canopy of cypress and eucalyptus trees. Monarchs search for perfect locations called microclimates which provide the perfect temperature, humidity, sunlight intensity, and wind speed for monarch butterflies to survive. When monarchs make their successful migration to overwintering habitats, they can be seen clustering among the trees, and when daytime temperatures are warm enough, they can be seen flying around. However, as monarchs make their migration to overwintering habitats, the potential for unknown impacts to their population are large due to the expansive territory monarchs migrate to. To understand how these unknown impacts can potentially affect the western monarch population, let's examine a few of the threats to western monarchs. Beginning with habitat loss. Damage to trees in an overwintering site can cause habitat loss for western monarch butterflies and can disrupt the just right conditions of the microclimate. Trees can fall at overwintering habitats for different reasons. One reason trees can fall at an overwintering habitat are from weather events such as rain and wind. Trees can also fall naturally on their own, such as from age. Drought can also affect the survival of trees at overwintering habitats. Stress from drought can cause eucalyptus trees to weaken and lose their leaves, which causes the canopy of trees to gradually disappear, which makes finding the perfect conditions at an overwintering habitat challenging for western monarchs. Fallen trees in an overwintering site can have lasting effects, if not managed. California State Parks works to protect the Pismo State Beach Monarch Butterfly Grove by restoring the habitat from any damage that has occurred. Additionally, 
staff takes a thoughtful approach to hazardous tree management by assessing trees annually to keep the balance of habitat and safety. If groves of trees in an overwintering site are removed for new development, this can contribute to habitat loss. Additionally, community development also contributes to milkweed habitat loss, just as it does for overwintering habitats. As we expand our cities and encroach upon the habitats of western monarch butterflies, this lessens their chance for survival. Another example of a threat to western monarchs is the use of pesticides. Pesticides are chemicals that farmers and gardeners use to spray on crops to prevent bugs from eating their plants. When pesticides are sprayed, harmful chemicals can be carried by the wind to nearby plants, including milkweed. Female monarchs lay eggs on milkweed, and this plant is the only native food source for caterpillars. If a caterpillar eats milkweed sprayed with a pesticide, it can cause harm to the caterpillar, especially when they are in the caterpillar and chrysalis stage of their life. Without healthy caterpillars, there will be no healthy butterflies. Let's explore the threat climate change, which is changes in average weather patterns over time. Earlier warm temperatures in the spring can cause monarchs to leave the overwintering habitat too soon. If a female monarch leaves the overwintering habitat too early, milkweed may not be available yet and she will be unable to lay her eggs. How can we help the western monarchs? Well, let's discover some of the ways that you and I can help the western monarch population. If you have an outdoor space such as a backyard, you can help by growing plants that are native to the area that you live in. Flowers from native plants provide nectar for monarchs to drink. You can also become a citizen scientist. Citizen scientists are people of the community who help notify scientists and researchers of tagged monarchs and monarch sightings. You can also help Western monarchs by taking measures to improve our environment and helping to slow down climate change. We can reduce our energy usage by turning off lights and appliances when you leave a room in your home. You can ride a bike instead of taking a vehicle. We can also reuse, recycle, and reduce the things we buy. We can also buy organic grocery items when possible. Hopefully with all of our help, the monarch population will successfully increase for future monarch generations. Thank you for joining us today as we explored some of the threats to the Western monarch butterfly. Hopefully with all of our help, the Western monarch butterfly can make a comeback. Until next time, this is Kristen and Molly. To learn more about Western monarchs, please visit the Oceano Dunes District YouTube and Facebook pages. And for additional Western monarch content, visit our Western monarch padlet. Links can be found in the description of this video.